Hey guys, it's Ryan, the uh, Tokyo Fun Hunter, uh, coming from you from Tokyo, Japan. Um, I'm outside on my rooftop. Uh, the sky is clearing up. It's going to be a beautiful day today. I uh, just want to answer one of the biggest questions of jobs in Japan. How to get jobs, where to get jobs, what should I do? One of the biggest ones. Um, and the biggest one that usually comes up is English teaching. English teaching in Japan. What should I do? How to do it? Is it worth it? Um, <laughs> This is a mixed question, mixed answer type of thing. Um, you know, I've had my experience. I've done, I've done the private sensei, the cafe lessons, the eikaiwas, um, you know, on and off here and there. And to be honest, uh, a lot of people come to Japan and they do the eikaiwa stuff, um, and it's not what they were expecting. It's really like, you know, they if you're here for a year, it can be very, very rewarding. You know, I have nothing against kids. It's 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 actually it can be very rewarding teaching kids about English. Um, but usually, the, it's more with the company. The company itself, um, you know, there there are a lot of great companies, but you got to make sure to do your homework and make sure you're going with a great company. Uh, a lot of people go to just get the visa sponsorship and they go into these situations, and it's not what they were imagining. You know, I, I've been there before, where they'll make a lot of promises. It's a good sales pitch, and then you join it, and it's not what you're expecting. It's a lot more hours, and it's going to be really up to you to. Uh, set the parameters. Make sure it is a full-time job and not a overtime job, like 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week. It's very easy to get sucked into that relationship. Um, so the Akaiwa experience, it's good. It's good, not great. Uh, one of the big ones is JET, where you come to Japan and you do the government, it's government-run program, and that is the best paying one. Now, what are the pros and cons of the JET program? The pros are that you'll make great money, you will save a lot of money, which if you want to go to grad school or, or other things in your life for investment purposes, it's a great way to go. Cons, you're not going to have that much of a social life. Unless you know Japanese super well and, and can like are very good at just meeting people on and off. I mean, usually in the JET program, they send you to small community towns, small community centers that are not very social hubs, you know, it's not, it's not Tokyo, it's not Kyoto, it's not Osaka. So it can be very different than what you were picturing. The other ways are the Eikai ways within the big hit cities. Now what are the pros and cons of those? Uh, the pros are you're socializing, you're being in the center of the public, there's so much stuff to do. Cons are it's not as well paying, as well as they're going to ask a lot more out of you. They're going to ask you to always work overtime, it's going to be really up to you to show those leadership skills, those independent skills, and really kind of really set the bars on a certain things. Um, you know, always have that willingness to walk away, never get sucked in, because a lot of people start going there and after months and months of repetition, they're, you know, regretting their decision, which is, is, is usually a harmful thing. Um, for me, uh, I'll, actually maybe I should have first said uh, my experience with jobs in general. Uh, a lot of people think that English teaching is the only way to go, and I'm, I'm letting you know that it's not. There are so many ways to go. My main job actually in Japan is I'm a whitewater river rafting instructor. You know, I was a river rafting guide in California and I, I did it, I've been doing it for the last two year, two summers here in Japan. I've taught surf lessons, I've taught uh, river and kayaking lessons, uh, I've made money as a model and as an actor here in Japan. You know, I'm a co-founder of an international event company that I like to work on. And uh, you know, I've done I've done the Akaiwa stuff, of course, like I mentioned. Uh, I also work with another outdoor organization with their sales and marketing, as well as management. Uh, I used to lead uh, groups of tours uh, into northern Japan, uh, basically teaching river rafting, kayak camping, you know, backpacking, all that stuff. Um, so a lot of I'm more possessed with the outdoor guiding stuff, and I've done some uh, personal private training as well with uh, regards to fitness. So I'm a very well-rounded individual and I know that there's more than one way to make income in Japan. Um, so what are some great ways to make income for the average person? You know, obviously my background is not everybody can do it. You know, you, I've had to be a river rafting instructor for years before, you know, they would have let me. It's, it's a great experience, I, I recommend it, but what are some things the average person can do? Um, well, yeah, the English teaching is the normal route. There's a lot of jobs online about IT, and uh, one of the you know Akaiwa stuff, the two most common ones. Uh, I'll give you a heads up if you're if you're outside of the uh, Japan and you don't know this stuff. The two most common ones are basically English teaching and headhunting. Now the headhunting experience might be a new term for a lot of you guys. So the English teaching is basically come in 
and you're never really teaching adults, despite what they might say, is usually kids. There's a few specific companies that really delve into teaching adults, uh, you know, business techniques, but usually that's people who have done the AKIO experience for, for five to 10 years, you know. They don't usually hire people right overseas. Yeah, maybe you might get lucky. Uh, but usually you're teaching between, you know, one to 10 year olds, and it can be a really rewarding experience, but if you have a lot of dreams and desires, uh, unless your dream is to be a major teacher, um, it's it's you know it's good to do things on the sidelines so you can start building up your other skill sets and qualities. Now the other one is headhunting. What is headhunting? Headhunting basically means you're helping people find jobs. Now here's some of the big things uh, you know about this. They will give you. Uh, I'm not sure. Some of them will give you a visa. Um, it's a good way to make about you make about twenty five hundred dollars worth a month or or, or niju goldman a month in japanese terms um here's some things and then you know <laughs> i uh, recently my my river acting season ended and i was looking for a new you know source of income and so i was like you know the next day just uh, looked on what, what are what are things around for the winter time i could do and, and you know i was thinking like you know should i do my snowboarding job that i usually do uh, should I do my uh, outdoor jobs or should I try uh, something in Tokyo? I decided to do something in Tokyo and uh, one of the things led me to a consulting firm that was a headhunter thing. I've, I've never done it, I've heard about it and right off the bat, even the interviewer was, I, I, so he was surprisingly honest, you know, people average work about 50 to 60 hours a week. That's just the normal, and that is the normal time frame in every job in Japan, really. You know, they pay uh, you 40 hours a week, but in Japanese mentality, it's like the, you're always putting more and more effort to get ahead and and you know It's called the salary man lifestyle and you know That's it becomes an addiction for a lot of people because you don't have a normal lifestyle outside of that of your workplace your, your your colleagues really get to know you as much as your family does or even more even more so so the uh, re basically the headhunters I know I go off topic too many times, but the headhunters, <laughs> the headhunter position um, is basically like even if you don't do any work, you get paid. Um, if you do get an extra person, uh, you get commission like any other sales job. Uh, but um, it, to get a person, it might take a while. It might take two, three to six months per person. Now it is like a 20% commission from what I can tell. Um, which, hey, if you're good with people and you think you could really prosper that, go for it. I'm all for it. Um, if you think you'd rather be in a, with kids and be very energetic, um, that's great too. Um, it, it really depends on you. Everybody's different. And, and, and for me, uh, I'm not really too keen on either. I like to go my own routes and, and find alternate sources of income, and I've been pretty good at doing that. Um, especially living in one of the most expensive cities and, and best cities in the world. It's, it's a really fun place um, if you make it so. Uh, so those are the two common ones for a lot of people are the headhunting firms and you know the AKI was the English conversation schools. Um, both can be rewarding but you know you hear a lot of people say you know you're working long hours, you're not getting paid enough for the time and the energy you're putting in and there are a lot of unreasonable unre requests from a lot of these type of companies. And I'm just letting you guys know that that's Japan, <laughs> that's the Japanese com uh, mentality, is that your company comes first, then your private self. You're doing everything in the community. And that's, it's, it basically comes from uh, the wa, the harmony. You know, you are sacrificing yourself for the greater good, the, the family, the community, the neighborhood, the city, the country. So when you enter the, com you know, the company, their mindset's really like, you're there to stay, and you're gonna give your all for it, and you are, you know, sacrifice every, you know, all your passions for this job. Um, now I'm not, it's up to you on what you want to do, but I'm recommending that you also, you know, be disciplined enough to always expand it. You know, every day looking for other sources, every day be trying to better yourself, because it is easy to get in that routine and then you leave the company and you're like, oh God, what am I supposed to do? So always be bettering yourself, look for alternate sources of income, because you never know where those could lead you. Um, and I'm, yeah, it's it's really really it can be very very fun. You know, a big one that people do is uh, looking for alternate sources of income. You know, how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of ways. A lot of the international crowd like to do the modeling acting stuff, which you know I'm a big part of. I, I do workshops all the time, um, and that is a little bit you know it's 
you know, how to do that. I think that's a, a different topic for another time. <laughs> but here's some ways that a lot of people do. They, they do either multi-level marketing, they do uh, marketing promotions for foreigners, they do the cafe experience online, they do the Skype lessons online, they do um, the acting online, they do basically tour groups within Tokyo. Um, there's a lot more online positions available as well as like, you know, a lot of people in, you know, the whole, you know, being an English teacher, to be honest, it's a little overdone. Anybody who speaks English claims they're an English teacher in Japan. It, it's just a way for them to make money. And I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad against it. It's just, a, it's, it's, it's a really, really tapped market. Everybody's been in there and everybody's posted. I mean, my, myself, I've also posted and I've had tons of clients. Um, and that's a very rewarding experience when you're talking to adults. Um, Cause you know, they want to learn English. Uh, but I'm just letting you know that if you're coming to Japan to be just an English teacher, it might be a little bit more difficult because I mean it's just one of those things you, you have to find kind of your own niche. My kind of niche has been the, the outdoor element. Um, uh, also another big question is do you need to speak Japanese for these classes? Um, usually no, which you know it's kind of a sad thing if you know Japanese and you want to come over here and do something great. Um, you know, if you do know Japanese, I would go for the higher levels of management. You know, that's what I usually do. In my river rafting and, uh, and outdoor jobs, I'm only speaking Japanese. Um, you know, me and the girl I'm seeing right now, we only speak Japanese. Uh, so that's always one of the bonus points. But for jobs in general, if you're a foreigner coming to Japan, you don't really need to know Jap Japanese. It's pretty much, they, they're, they're actually more happy, mostly if you know English and you don't use Japanese. Because uh, that's what the people are paying for. Um, so these are just some tips and suggestions. Um, I think in the description I'll put some uh, other sources up for you guys if you if you need to. One of the big things that I do is like you know I do my event company, which is a, a source of income for me. Uh, I have like my own marketing stuff that I'm doing, which is it's it's really really widely done. Um, and like I'll recommend doing that. Check that out, as well as the fact uh, you know try to actually put your your profile up on a lot of English teaching pages. And a little tip about that is don't settle for the really, really cheap prices. You know, a lot of people put 2,000 you know, yen an, uh, an hour for a private lesson, which is about 20 bucks an hour. Go the full, like, you know, 30 bucks an hour or 40 bucks an hour. Most people are willing to pay for more a higher end English teacher than like just the person traveling through. So if you can really do that, I, I guarantee you're gonna get more clients. I mean, that's how what I do is I put mine maybe twice as much as the average person and I'm getting a lot more clients as a result. Um, and make sure it's close to your actual position or station. Don't make it so it's like an hour away for commute. You're, you're, you lose an hour each way. It's, it's not worth the time. You're, you're spending too much time on it. So I, I hope these tips help. Um, you know, I'm still new to the whole video vlogging, so I'm letting you guys know. Uh, but let me know in any comments or questions. I'll be sure to answer them to the best of my ability. I will read every single one of them. Um, and you know, drop me a line if you're ever in Tokyo. Love to see you and love to, to help you guys out if you need some. All right, guys, have a great day. Cheers.